after our consciousness is our pre-consciousness. So as mentioned, this is the part of our mind that lies just below the shallow waters. And so although we're not currently thinking about it on our mind stage, we can access this fairly easily. So I like to think about our pre-conscious as a photo album or as a memory book of things that we can retrieve pretty easily. You just have to go to your bookshelf and pull out that right memory. And so, for example, uh, some things that you might not have been thinking about just before I put up this slide, but now you are, is perhaps what you had for breakfast today, or something about your favorite childhood pet, or perhaps the layout of your bedroom or your home. Do you know where the light switch is when you enter your bedroom? Or perhaps you don't have a light switch right there, you have a lamp. Can you recall that? You can hold all this information in your mind. A famous uh, victory that you had when you won a trophy, let's say, a, a fight that you had with a loved one, a good family vacation that you had at one point in time. We can hold lots of memories and ideas in our pre-conscious. Because of this, we know our pre-conscious is much larger than our consciousness. Our consciousness can only focus on one thing at our time, but our pre-conscious, the level that can hold all our obtainable and accessible memories, is much larger. It could be anything from factoids that you learned a long time ago, to fandom points from your favorite shows, to content you're learning in university, to personal anecdotes. There's so much in our pre-consciousness. But it's important to understand our pre-consciousness is not just about the past. It's also helping us to filter things right now and in the present. As just mentioned with the note on absent-mindedness and inattentional blindness, we also have to pay attention to the fact that there's so much things going on right now that we're constantly filtering things. Only a few things are getting through onto our mind stage of consciousness and the rest of it is going to our pre-consciousness. And so a great phenomenon to explain this is the cocktail party effect. This is called the cocktail party effect because we could understand it if you're in a room full of people in pre-pandemic times, that is. And so imagine you go to a noisy party. There might be some music playing. Even if it's on low, it's in the background. There's lots of people having individual or small group discussions. And you find yourself in the corner of room having a discussion with someone and you're focused on the conversation with them. Truly, really, it's an interesting conversation. You're not bored. You're not want your mind isn't wandering. You are focused on your conversation with them. But then all of a sudden you hear your name said from across the room. How did your brain do that? How did you hear that your name was said across the room? You weren't paying attention to the other conversations in the room, or were you? What happens here is our brain is constantly taking in all these extra stimuli, even if we're not aware of it. You might think that the only thing on your mind's eye, the only thing on your mind's stage is that one-on-one -on -one conversation, and it is but the rest of the party is being held in your pre-conscious. And they don't necessarily have to say your name, but if they mention something that is very significant to your identity, something about your hometown or your university major or your favorite fandom or anything of that nature, your brain will filter in and say, this is important, pay attention to it. So it's pretty fascinating that our pre-consciousness can actually be a filter and a catch-all for all of these stimuli in our environment. So now that we talked about consciousness and pre-consciousness, let's try to dive a little bit deeper and get at our unconsciousness. So our unconsciousness is deep into the deep waters that we may not be able to ever access or can only access through a great deal of difficulty. And so what's in our unconscious? Well, this represents our deeply repressed thoughts, the memories we don't want or can't access. So this might be buried uh, memories of trauma. This might be really negative or embarrassing things that happened to us. It might also be shameful things that we don't want other people to know about us, such as if you have some really nasty motivations, if you're really jealous of a family member, if you are vengeful to a person, but you don't want people to find out. Those might be very deeply buried. If you have these unfulfilled desires to please your parents, for instance, that may be deeply buried. And some things that are subliminally perceived might be down here too. Now, if you recall what we talked about in consciousness and pre-consciousness, that we did talk in unit four about different subtypes of, of subliminal perception, where inintentional blindness might go might be in the upper levels. This might be when we're absent-minded and we're not paying attention, or when something's being filtered out by our pre-consciousness, but the things that are so quick that they're below our threshold, uh, this might be where those forms of subliminal perception go. 
And so this can be really, really intense if you try and access these memories, because these tend to be very emotional and they must have been buried and they tend to be buried for a very emotional reason.